Hey everybody. Um, this is going to be a uh, hopefully a short video on rodent euthanasia using the CO2 method. I'm doing the video because uh, when I was researching um, how to do it, I found a hard time finding any good reliable information um, on how to do it or you know the correct way to do it. A lot of people I saw using dry ice, uh, vinegar, and um, baking soda, that sort of thing, and it just seemed um, messy and uh, not real reliable. Um, so I decided to do a uh, little research myself, and then when I figured it all out, I decided that um, I'd pass on the information to anybody else that was interested. Um, I'm not going to do a live demonstration or anything like that, so if that's why you're here, um, you're not going to see it. Um, but I am going to show you how it's done, and I'm going to show you how to make um, the CO2 chamber itself. So uh, first off, all the information that I found um, was from a few different sources that I had researched. Um, uh, one was University of Wisconsin uh, Research Animal Resources Center. Um, another one was American Veterinary Medical Association. And the last one I looked into was NIH. Um, I'm not going to get as technical as all the stuff that I was reading through, um, but I'll you know, try and give you the information that I found. Um, basically what I found was that there was two forms of like accepted humane euthanasia that you can do at home. There's several others, but only two really that you can do at home. Um, one is um, cervical dislocation or CD. You can Google that if you want to you know, know what, that's it, what that is. Um, the other one is CO2 exposure, which is what I'm going to show you um, today. Um, CD, it's not recommended on rodents over 200 grams, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's also kind of a hands-on uh, procedure that some people may not be comfortable uh, doing. Um, and CO2 is acceptable as a humane form of uh, euthanasia on rodents if they're older than 10 days. Um, that's because when they're younger than 10 days, they're resistant to hypoxia, and then it takes them an extended uh, period of time or exposure to CO2 in order for uh, death to occur. Um, it's also suggested if you use that method on um, some you know, rodents that are under 10 days of age, that they uh, be followed up with CD just to make sure that they're dead. So with all that said, um, Here's the completed unit. Let me show you all the parts uh, that I used, and um, then we'll come back to this. Parts, we have a 24-ounce CO2 paintball gas bottle. Then I bought a, um, a remote separately. That's this piece here. And then I bought a whip that actually threads into that. You can buy these two pieces together, or you can buy them separately. I chose to buy them separately. Um, the end of it had a quick disconnect, and this came with it, this part came with it. This part over here I had to buy separately, I got that at the paintball store. It's got regular threads, they're not tapered on this side, they are metric, so I went to the hardware store, got a nut and a washer, then I can attach it to the tub. Um, I did these other connectors or connections with uh, Teflon tape for the seal. Um, over here, we just have a um, plastic fitting that'll be for the uh, air outlet. Then I bought a nut to thread it on. This will go in the top of the container. And then some surgical tubing that I had laying around that'll work. That'll just push on to the end of this here. Then for the tub, I just got a uh, standard food tub with a uh, food storage tub, about two and a half gallon. The blue is a um, silicone seal that goes around it. It's got the latching lids, and I liked it because it had the handle on it, so I can maybe put everything inside of it and uh, store it. Okay, so now that you have all parts, um, you can see how it's kind of put together. Um, I'll start with the, uh, the little cap on the top. This is a little hose that runs out. That goes into a little jug of water. That's to keep any oxygen from backflowing into the chamber after you've loaded it with uh, carbon dioxide. Um, it's 
Carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, so it will settle down in the bottom. And I have noticed that um, during changes of different batches that the CO2 remains in the chamber and the rats will start to kind of fall asleep even um, without even turning the gas on. So it does kind of stay in there. So this, I'm not sure whether you really need it or not. I chose to continue to use it. The container I used, uh, like I showed you before, has a uh, seal around it, silicone seal, locking lid, just to keep it all airtight. Um, over on this side, um, the quick connect is fitted onto the end, bolted in the inside. This latches on uh, like that. So I also always put a piece of paper towel or something in the bottom because they tend to urinate sometimes and um, that just kind of keeps things clean. So just put them in, lock it up, stick the hose down in here. I don't usually put it in the water right away. I just kind of listen for the air to start running. And then I drop the hose in. You can see it's pretty strong, so I'll kind of back off a little bit. I start off slow. Um, they say that you're supposed to let them start to fall asleep, and when you see them kind of in that sleepy mode, then you increase the gas. Um, and it should take about three minutes for them to uh, expire. And that should be it. So um, hopefully uh, this video helps uh, anybody that had any questions about it. And um, if you got any questions for me, just uh, hit me in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Thanks for watching.